Hi, and welcome to Classical Stuff You Should Know. There are three of us on this podcast, three grown human beings. Uh, my name is AJ Hannenberg, and I'm joined by Thomas Magby. Hello. And Graham Donaldson. I, too, am a grown human being. Yeah, is it like as opposed to babies? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, no infants on this podcast? And we were going to do a full episode, but I was all like, you know, like, whatever. We don't have to. And so we don't have to. Like, do I was we just, want to, guys. It's just what we usually do, but yeah. we don't really, like, have I mean, to. I'm getting just, tired. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of late. I, oh. I really just sort of don't want to. Mm-hmm. So, if it's only really there was a thing that could keep me going, <laughs> yeah, yeah, make sure that we actually do it. Okay. So yeah, today we are talking about uh, discipline. Uh, <laughs> so in some way, I'm I'm loving our order of podcast right now. So to start with, so uh, Graham two episodes ago talked about Brave New World. AJ last episode talked about the praise of folly or in praise of folly. I right? hope some or of you guys have been signing your receipts all goofy. Yeah. Oh, it's been a week since that. Yeah. Oh, send us emails with all the funny things you've done in the last week, please. I got punched in the face because <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> but so I guess we kind of ended with some open questions as to whether we were classical heretics by praising folly or if we'd done a good thing in that. So I guess by us talking about discipline, this is like the corrective to, talking about folly last time i mean when we were doing the podcast the bust of aristotle fell, fell off of what the... <laughs> the shelf yeah and we're... shattered on the ground yeah. and i could feel the the spirits of classical uh, uh paragons who've gone before uh-huh. us yeah. rush out of the room was so. it as bad as when i implied that you don't need to learn latin because translation <laughs> english translations are just as good i blocked that up yeah good you probably... actually i don't know latin Hanenberg doesn't really none, know none Latin. Of us do. Yeah. None of us know Greek or Latin. Yeah. Oh, Alistake Cafludio. What does that mean? I, I'm just making up stuff that's not Latin. Uh, yeah. I'll do <laughs> <laughs> Wingardium Leviosa. Oh, Latin. Oh, great. It's Leviosa. Uh, Abu... We talked about our Patronuses, right? Yes, we did. I think so. Test. What was mine? A beagle? Something like that? That sounds right. Mine was uh, with a, a little tiny like field mouse. I was real upset. Why? That it was, you wanted like a bigger one? Yeah, I wanted like a, like a, I don't know. Well, I want like a mountain goat. I want like a warthog. Why I want something goat? like just, <laughs> Those guys cause a lot of problems. Cool. So does Donald. Speaking of problems, let's talk about <laughs> solutions to problems like discipline. Hmm. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> hi, AJ. Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. So when I use the word discipline, so eventually we'll get to uh, a Latin word because, so I forget the exact quote, but I loved the thing of from praise of folly that the waste of time is to find four ancient words and just expound on them. So, you know, I've got it down to <laughs> on two. today's podcast. Yeah, I was going to say, watch me expound. Four old words. Yeah. I think this is, I think we only have two, but we'll see how this goes. And the people who are learned in Latin are sitting out there listening, going, well, yes, indeed. I understand. Yeah. And all the non learned are going like, Oh, he's so smart. Yeah. Uh, people who actually know Latin will always uh, correct me in my pronunciation. So, I'm now re- realizing I probably should have looked this stuff up, but one of the words is, um, uh, I guess I'm just going to go, anyway, whatever. I can't look up pronunciations now. Disciplina is the word that will event- is the word that we're working from. So you can tell that it's related to the word discipline because it's very similar to the word discipline. But when I say the word discipline, what is a, like what, what is the meaning of discipline? What comes to mind when you hear that word? The montage of Rocky training mm. in the snowy tundra, lifting logs, getting ready to beat, what's his name? Drago. 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 Drago Malfoy. Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly, not yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. My favorite Drago. crossover. Even Ivan Drago. Ivan Drago. Ivan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, training montage is good. So, you know, at some sort of goal and working toward that goal. And he is eating a certain way. He's exercising a certain way. He's like eating rocks. Eating rocks. Just loves those rocks. And he's just like totally focused on that one goal. Okay. That's right. An order, an ordered existence. Ordered. That has, that, that has, has goals in mind. I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we kind of spoke against order, I, I would say, in the last episode. So maybe we would... Would it be fair to associate discipline with the rational part of us? So sure. tied yeah. to reason. Mm-hmm. So again, you we think through the goal that you want or the ending that you want. You work your way backwards and you say, "What does? What do I need to do in order to get that?" Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't really want to do those things, but I will discipline myself in order to do those things so that the thing can be accomplished. I think that's a very rational process. Yeah. So good. Anything else on discipline? Okay, so when we are defining discipline, we are talking about it in a very individualistic way. We're saying my discipline, again, Rocky is one person. I guess he has his coach, anyway, or he has Adrian. But. Gotta hit him hard, Rock. <laughs> Burgess <laughs> Meredith. Yeah, this, right, yes. Mm-hmm. I, we've talked about, how many times have we talked about Rocky on I this feel podcast? like a lot, yeah. not enough. Yeah, 
uh, listener, please write in and tell us. My brother in law's never seen Rocky. What? Your brother in law needs to see Rocky. The first one's real weird. It was real different than the rest of the Rockies. Like mm. the rest of the Rockies turn into sort of the franchisey mm. thing. Well, there were money pits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah, first yeah, Rocky yeah. was not so much of a money pit. Yeah, no. that's but that's kind of like the magic of it is low budget. Uh, like wasn't supposed to be successful. I want to say, but he grew up to end the communist revolution <laughs> eventually. But it would be, <laughs> be a few years until that. Like Stallone was the one like choreographing that final um, uh, boxing match at the end of the first one, mm-hmm. and he has no idea what he's doing. Um, anyway, it's just, anyway, it's a really cool story. Um, s- discipline. So d- we're talking about it. Like the individual has a goal in mind. And so they go after that goal to do whatever it takes. Uh, and Graham was just talking about, it's also, sometimes it involves you doing what you wouldn't want to do, mm-hmm. but discipline kind of has at the end of it, some sort of like, uh, I guess I'll say this, tell me if you disagree. There's some sort of like personal excellence at the end of discipline. Like there's some thing you're working toward in discipline that, you're denying yourself things to get something at the end. They don't want to push back or disagree on that. I don't think so. No, no. So this is not entirely in line with the classical, like a classical conception of these two ideas uh, of, of discipline. And then I'll, we'll introduce a second word in a second. So, um, I'll be reading a series of quotes from soldiers and ghosts, a history of battle in classical antiquity by J E Linden. So, uh, I'll read you a story in a second. Uh, let's go with it. The old stories of the Romans then are not just a Roman rumination on their aggressive, competitive military ethos, but also a way of worrying at the tension between that ethos and another fundamental Roman military value disciplina. So when we are talking about like a personal excellence, a personal thing that we're working toward a better, not a better, a different word to apply to that would be, um, um, we would call it virtue now. I believe correctly pronounced in Latin, it's virtus, but it's it looks like virtus, V-I-R-T-U-S. It looks like virtue, but virtus or virtus. Um, what is what is virtue? What is what is virtus? Do these words mean anything to you all? Um, excellence. Yep. Um, so if we the, only, the one I'm more familiar with is like the Greek erite, mm-hmm. which means the excellence of something, and it doesn't have, necessarily have to be moral excellence. Yes. It has to do with like. Uh, per, um, performing its function. So yes. things have functions, things have telosses, or the things have reasons. And when something is performing its function, you say that it has erite. Mm-hmm. Or I, I'm assuming or it's, virtues. you say you have, yeah. weir- you have virtue. You have virtues. Yeah. I don't know why, but closely in my mind, associated with these two ideas, excellence and virtue is purity, right? Mm, it's like un, something untainted, mm. right? Where yeah. if, if, if something is virtuous, it is unstained. So okay. if that is an un... If that is a pure chair, or if that, or if that chair is a tainted chair, it's wobbly. Yeah, it's not comfortable. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not fulfilling what it's supposed to be doing, which is to be a comfy chair. Yeah, yeah. that's good. So, so then, so these two, so one conception then is so uh, virtus virtus is personal excellence. I think it's very helpful to point out that's not only a moral excellence; it's any type of excellence. So this is good. Okay, so that is in opposition then, not opposite. Well, actually, it is. Let me read you a story that will get at this distinction between the two. Yay, story time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Story time Everyone with Magby. Yeah, yeah you got to practice. You're your the father floor. now. Okay, yes, I am. And I'm going to absolutely read this story. So get excited as I read this story, which I'll definitely read to my three-week-old. Okay. There is a detail in the account of Valerius and the Raven that the modern eye can easily pass over, but that no Roman would ever miss. Before Valerius went forth to fight the Gaul, the young hero scrupulously asked the permission of the consuls. To a Roman, this detail resonates terribly with the Stark story. Romans said it in the same generation, as whatever, don't worry about that, of a young man who uh, who fought in single combat against the order of his commander. So, guy said, um, uh, this guy wants to go and have a fight one-on-one with this person. The consuls say no. That's the important part. That's what's being set up. So, this dude who we're talking about was the son of the very... Um, uh, Titus Manlius Tor- Torquatus, I don't know who this is, maybe y'all do, who had claimed the Gauls' torque in the earlier duel. As Livy tells the tale, the son proudly presented his father, the consul, with the spoils of an enemy warrior he had slain, in order that all report that I am sprung from your blood. So he goes into one-on-one combat against the command of the consuls. So he asks the consuls, can I go have one-on-one combat? Consuls say no. The son goes and has this fight anyway and wins this combat and brings it back to his father, who's one of these consuls, and says, hey, dad, look, aren't you impressed? But the consuls had forbidden the seeking of single combat. This was the Latin war fought against an enemy alike in language and equipment, and the consuls feared the resulting possibilities for error. 
The father says to his son, you have destroyed military disciplina by which up to now the Roman state has stood firm, replied his implacable father. And you yourself, I think, if there is truly any of my blood in you, will not refuse to restore by your punishment the military disciplina, which has collapsed on account of your crime. Go bind him to the stake. He commands to someone, go bind him to the stake. And so um, this father ordered the torture and execution of his son before his own eyes, not for cowardice, but for misplaced courage. Okay. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. (laughs) This has been classical stuff you should know. Okay, so what's happening in the story? We have an example of, um, I'm going to use my um, incorrect pronunciations for the rest of this time, because again, if you read the word, it's what it would look like. So in the story, we have virtus that is put in contrast with disciplina. So virtus is the excellence of the warrior going into combat, doing awesome at combat, bringing back the spoils. But he broke some type of rule here. What is that rule that he broke? Obey your elders in the military. Yeah. So there's some sort of like chain of command or, chain or, or That's good. but they also it makes reference to there's almost like this there's this mythical this mythical way that the Romans go about combat that you should have known you didn't or you didn't revere enough. Oh, that's good. So it's something deeper than the rule. It's because they said they're like us, and they yeah. So it's not like we we saw them as as lesser beings, and their slaughter is whatever for whatever reason not our concern. But because you did this, um, you it's like what we dis you disrespected our enemy. You disrespected somebody that's who is, is close to us, but for whatever reasons of accident we're at war with right now. But we respect them, and so you going and doing this, you're treating them like lower humans that you know i don't know uh, i don't know there, there seems great. to be yeah. like that 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 it's um it's almost like you didn't by doing this you just showcase that you don't even know what it means to be a roman sure oh that's good so it's something deeper yeah it's not just the rule it's what it is to be roman which is tied with conflict it's tied with combat okay this is good um there and i didn't think of it till you said that but what the son had done would have been appropriate in any other combat any other war that isn't against a group of people that look the same, speak the same language, this type of excellence would have been okay. Mm-hmm. But to both ask permission and then break that promise, it doesn't matter the result of that. It, mm-hmm. it matters that you break a rule. Okay. And that then leads into the second paragraph, which I was reading a while ago because I did it out of order. Uh, discipline, the flat English translation of this disciplina, fails to convey the full force of this Roman concept. For Disciplina was not primarily a system of imposed or felt rules to make an unwarlike people place themselves in danger, to do something unnatural to them. In the old stories, the Romans used to think about Disciplina, tales like that of the son of Manlius Torquatus, which is the story I just read. It is conveyed primarily as a break to overly aggressive behavior. The tradition as it came down to the first century BC could be summed up thus. In war, fighting against the enemy without orders or retiring too slowly when recalled from the fight was more often punished than fleeing the standards or abandoning one's position when pressed. Roman disciplina was understood to be more a curb than a spur, and it formed an opposed pair with the Roman virtus or virtus. Okay. So then what is this disciplina? That last line is what gets to it. It's more of a curb than a spur, as opposed to virtus, which I think of more often as a spur and less of a curb. Um, this gets to what I was trying to respond to in the In Praise of Folly episode, that wisdom that is not spurred to action isn't like a, isn't a complete wisdom. To know about the right thing to do and not do it is to be unwise. It's a lack of virtus to uh, not spur yourself on, to not do excellent things. But doesn't... Isn't discipline needed? So if we think, go back to go back to the idea of the golden mean. Yeah. So courage is halfway between rashness mm-hmm. and cowardice. Mm-hmm. You need discipline to move from cowardice to courage. Mm-hmm. You need discipline to move from rashness to courage. And then when you have courage, then you have virtue, which is the doing. Yes. So is it is it fair to say that discipline precedes? virtue you need discipline you need to be disciplined before you can be virtuous yeah i, I think this again depends on the. that's not true of the person. chair the chair doesn't need discipline correct well because it's just i mean someone needed to apply discipline to the chair that's what i'm saying that so what is the, the chair before it's built is a piece of wood mm-hmm. and so it needs both there's like the reduction and the putting together of the chair 
And so it needs both. Like the components of the chair need to be excellent for it to be an excellent chair, but then it also needs to be like put together in the right way. But, but in the soul of a man, it seems like you need the discipline before you can have the virtue. I can know what courage is. I can, I can recognize it and point to it in action and no, I don't have it myself. Yep. But uh, so this, this is a better analogy to draw. So with courage, I, I think, I don't think you can make a broad statement about everyone to say that everyone has an excess of cowardice and therefore they need um, to be spurred on. Cause I would say that you need the virtus. I think there are some people who are born with the instinct to run headlong into combat in, into I, I use the term metaphorically into fights, into combat, into difficulty. And what they need then is the disciplina to curb that instinct. Yeah, because they're rash. Yes, but I think that there, people are different in that way. So some people will start with an excess of the instinct and need to be curbed. Some people will need to be spurred on to action. Mm. But it's a... Uh, so the... So the the sparking or the uh, the spurning comes from those who are deficient. The curbing comes from those who are in excess. In excess, yes. So okay. there's a tension between these two, but both are ultimately necessary. You can't have a group of overly rash people. You'll lose again. Are like these original these conceptions of virtue and discipline are founded in combat, and so a person a a a, a, a town a, a a polis that has only rash people who are in their wars are they're going to lose that war uh, people who uh, a town that only has timid people is going to lose that war also there there are problems and errors on both sides that's the only point to start with so you're saying virtue is the spur so in this virtue is the spur so in this instance if i was cowardly moving towards bravery would be virtue yes so bravery itself is not the virtue where are we drawing that distinction that's interesting so if so courage is the is the mean between cowardice and foolhardiness of virtue. what would you call courage if you wouldn't call it virtue and if you do call courage it virtue. Is virtue courage is virtue yeah okay so then courage is the excellent point between oh this is fair i'm saying that if you are depending on what side of excess you are too close to you either need a spurring or you need a curbing so but, but the spurring the spurring if we are if we're using the same word for the spurring and having the thing itself that's fair doesn't that cause a problem? Well, the spurring Probably. is an example of virtue. So like yes. the spurring is uh, is is one token of virtue, but the actual but the, the the type of virtue which you're trying to put into your so which you're trying to be is is brave. Yes. So, um uh, uh, if I'm cowardly, I need to figure out ways. I need to find ways that I can be brave. So I need to practice the virtue of bravery and I'm doing I'm I'm doing but you wouldn't individual call that act, discipline. But you, uh, yeah, that's that's what so I think. Is, I would yeah. say that you would call that discipline. So you're disciplining is, yourself you, to do. You can flip the word on its head yeah. too. If I'm not spurring myself, but rather I am curbing my laziness yes. or curbing my cowardness, doesn't that bring it into discipline rather uh, than virtue? I just wouldn't. Um, I, I I don't think there's like laziness is a is a lack of action. I would not call it the presence of inaction. So all I'm saying is that. Uh, again, so if you start with the concept of virtue is the is a mean between two excesses, there's a different solution depending on what side of the excess that you're on. One side, you need to do more action, and one is you need to do less or redirect that action or energy, whatever. I'm totally with you. Yeah. My issue is just using the, the same word for yeah, both. Sure. So uh, I guess that's why I'm adding a Latin word to make it uh, better. No, so uh, <laughs> to give it credibility. No, uh, like part of this is a... What we call discipline, yes, is like um, mm. is different than what is meant by disciplina here. That's what I'm saying. So disciplina in an ancient conception, in this Roman conception, is curbing. Mm. Okay. The, right. the way we talk about it now is different because like I can be disciplined. Like, it's like harnessing willpower. Yeah, my discipline like I can discipline myself to be more assertive in conversations and like that would technically be a spurring. Not a curbing. Not a curbing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'd be curbing your timidity. But again, I don't think timidity is a thing. Like timidity is a lack of courage. Right. All right. I'm with you. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. I'm on board. Yeah. Perfect. So we're just, let's roll. It's more of a, yeah. So this is a language thing. This is good. So, okay. So two conceptions. Would you say it's a translation thing? It is a translation thing. And obviously, translation doesn't matter. (laughs) English teachers were discipline and virtue. No, this is perfect. No, this has been really helpful. Okay. So, so 
there is some virtue that we're going after. We either have a lack of the material of that virtue or an excess of that of the material of that virtue, and either side is a problem, and so we're looking for a mean. Okay. I, I guess the the place we'll get to uh, is I, I feel like we spent the last hour talking about how we want appetites to run rampant, not rampant. We well, kind of. We want our attitudes to pull us in certain places. We want um, our our appetites to like draw us somewhere. And we said that we kind of don't want a discipline. We don't want a curbing. That's that's overstating it. We were talking about that the appetites can have a corrective um, course. Cor- I think we talked about course corrective ability on on something that's g- grown stagnant. I think you'd even say that that foolhardiness would be a spurring. Interesting. So. If, or is the folly somehow a virtue? Like, is it is it halfway? When we talked about this last, the last week, is it halfway between Cato and um, Kanye? I was going <laughs> to say Marmalade off, but or, or someone who's in, in just always a fool. Yep. Maybe let's take it a different way. So Kanye, don't take that to heart. I know you're listening. <laughs> I'm please, sorry, man. We love you. Us, yeah. That would be <laughs> don't be mad, Yeezy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> This would be majestic. Take it easy. Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> I hate this so much. Okay. So maybe I'll take it. Let's take it. Uh, so we've brought up Cato a few times, um, not smiling, not being like a cheerful fellow. Um, is He's there- like, okay, if you don't know who Cato is, you may know who the Muppets are. And if you know who the Muppets <laughs> are, that eagle, uh-huh. the bald, the blue eagle, uh-huh. that's Cato. Yeah. Great. Um, great. Maybe I'll phrase it this way. Is it good to live a disciplined life? Yes. Yeah. Why? Because it's necessary for virtue. Because you're always shooting out all over the place, and you gotta you gotta shut that down. But like, what is the like? Why? Like, um, because nature needs to be nature needs to be curbed and molded. This is why God didn't. Gr- we weren't planted in a jungle. We were planted in a garden. So mm-hmm. na- nature has its um, um, has its ways that do need to be mixed with the spirit of man do need to be mixed with. So man is, is a rational animal. So mm-hmm. we are, are animalistic. And then we also are angelic with our, with our reason. So, um, um, discipline is necessary in order to curb mm-hmm. the, the wildness. Mm-hmm. But isn't there, there's a, we want, I got a lot of wildness, but we want that wildness, oh. don't we? Like that, maybe that was the theme. Maybe that's the theme of the last episode, but there's something, there's something good in the wildness. I guess, mm-hmm. let me take it this way. Um, uh, let's say... Uh, I mean, this is romanticism, right? Like, this is... The romanticism maybe. was coming in and saying, like, like, oh my goodness, you, you don't live in a clock. Mm-hmm. Like, we got... There's... We've got passions, mm-hmm. and we and these things are part of the human exist, the human experience. We yep. gotta We gotta deal with these things. We gotta, like, enjoy these things. But there's a difference between mirth and carousing. Yeah. Mirth and carousing, yes. Right, mirth would be a little bit of folly. Carousing would be foolhardiness. Let's, I'm, uh, so I'm going to take it from the on the side of discipline. So um, so let's take let's say I came to you all and I was like, guys, I'm going to start running. I'm going to run every day. I'm going to run. You know, first week I'm like, I'm going to do 30 minutes. And then the week after I'm like, I'm going to run an hour. And like, so I'm running, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really consistent in running. I'm running, running, running. But like, I hate it. But I do it every day. So like, I'm really committed to running. I get healthier. I'm looking better. Um but like, I hate running, but I keep doing it because the results are really good. So do your knees. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then let's say after that, I'm like, well, you know, running is good, but I also, I'm going to like eat really healthy. And by eating healthy, I mean, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat or drink that Soylent stuff every day. Isn't it called Soylent? It's still called yeah. Soylent. Yeah. And so yeah, it's going to give people. me. people. Yeah, it's, it's not that, not that Soylent. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's. Yeah, that's Soylent that Green. That's Soylent Green. Very different. I'm it's sure different Soylent Green. I'm sure, I'm sure it's still people. But yeah, great. So, you know, there's that. Uh, <laughs> tastes like people. There's that. Uh, what? <laughs> Why do you know <laughs> what people you taste like? How would you know? Graham the cannibal. Next week, cannibalism. I'm not from here. Oh, I would love. Let's talk about classical cannibalism. Okay. So. Kind of a cool episode. And then, you know, so I do this for, I do my workout for a month and then. Month two, I'm like, I okay. bit my lip. That's how I know people t- what people taste like. I guess that doesn't really taste like anything, saved. though. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you saying that you saved yourself proves that you're a cannibal. Okay. They bought it. Yeah, that's really- <laughs> bah. Uh, so then that's month one is me working out. Month two is I'm going to drink Soylent all the time because Soylent is super healthy for me. It gets me all my nutrients, but it tastes horrible. But like, I'm going to be really healthy if I do it. So I do a month of 
drinking Soylent. I get really healthy then. Congratulations, you founded a startup. No, <laughs> oh, no yeah. great. But then by next month, I'm like, well, I actually only want to read like really serious, good literature. I'm going to cut out all the online um, articles. I'm going to cut out all the like fun, humorous stuff. I'm only going to read like, I don't uh, Soldiers and Ghosts, A History of Battle and Classical Antiquity. Like that, you know, like I'm only going to read like, that, I'm anyway, that's the one I already read. But like, I'm only going to read super serious, heady material. Okay. At the end of these like three months, um, I guess first of all, is this like a life you would envy? Would you be like that guy? I want to be like that guy. Yeah. What's the telos of discipline? Is it the good life? Because I mean, at some level, part of me is like, there is a, there's something satisfying with, with the order that you're describing. And there's another part that's like, especially with the food. If you, I, so people, may, if you don't know Soylent, oh my goodness. So Soylent is, is, that, is, a, is a slurry that you drink, and it's supposed to have all of your nutrients. But the guy who, who started it, I remember watching the video when it came out in like 2013 or whatever. And I was like, do you, do you not want to die but hate the joy of eating? <laughs> then drink the slurry. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it takes all the the, the mirth, out, right. all the joy out of right. food. So, but so in that sense, in that sense, it's like, oh man, the person you're just describing sounds like intense. Yes. So to, and would have good results. Like that's the yeah. They would be healthy. Mm-hmm. They would be well read. They would be able to like quote things intelligently that unlike I'm able to do on this podcast. Like there'd be all these results you'd look at and go, that's kind of good, right? Yeah, but life would be terrible. Would it? Yeah. Okay. You you said you hate running mm-hmm. and then eating Soylent every day. And I mean, the reading doesn't sound so bad. Old books get a bad rap, but a lot of them are really good. That's a great name. What was it Ghosts and... Ghosts and Soldiers? Ghosts Soldiers. Oh, that was the one I just quoted. That sounds earlier. cool. Is that, a good book? Is that like a website you like? No, it's it's a book. It's oh, Soldiers and good. Ghosts, A History of Battle in Classical Antiquity. Oh. It's good for what, for what I've read. It's very good. So what you're describing isn't a garden. You're describing... A you're talking farm. about a French garden, like those really perfectly manicured with like perfect straight line, mm, like Versailles. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah I hate Versailles. Me too. Okay. Why? Because it's not a garden. It's mad. It's like, so it, it was this conception of the garden of like complete, almost deistic order yeah, placed good. upon the world. Good. And so versus if so, if, if in terms of gardens, think of Versailles. And if you ever go to the Monet Gardens um, in Normandy, if you're in the, in the north of France, like then there's this. There is a different, you can just Google pictures of it. There's a different philosophy of gardening that talks about, it, it takes a discipline mm. to do that thing. It, that doesn't just happen naturally, but there is a, but there's a different beauty to it, or there's a different, the, the quality of it or the, the outpouring is, is so less cold and clinical. Mm-hmm. Cold and clinical. That's good. Than Versailles. I like that. That's helpful. Uh, so just to take this even further, the conception of disciplina, this Roman conception will eventually be like deified. It will eventually be put in as like, uh, will be called a goddess. We'll be, we'll, we'll form, um, yeah, we'll become a deity. It's, and, um, the virtues tied to that deity will be, um, faithfulness, sternness, and frugality. Okay. So then in the same vein, imagine a life. So faithfulness sounds sounds great. I'm, I'm not going to argue against faithfulness. But imagine a life that is like totally focused on frugality. Again, you would look and say there are benefits to it where like cutting down on your expenses so you can give more money away or so you can save more. Like there, um, there are benefits to frugality. But I'm, I'm sure you have known people who are too frugal. Mm-hmm. That, that place exists. Um, someone who... Uh, I can't think of it. You go out to dinner with them. You all share a ticket. They bought the most expensive thing, but then want to split it ev- evenly. You know, like there, there are ways where frugality just is like not where, yeah, where that's, it's distasteful. Yeah. Distasteful. That's a you good go to, go to movies, but you never have the popcorn. Yeah. That's good. So you, oh, popcorn's expensive. Yeah. So you'll eat off of someone else's popcorn. 
Um, and, yeah, okay, that's good. Like I do every time we go <laughs> that's to That's what I was just thinking, but I don't think you do it anyway. I, I just buy popcorn every time I go. So, when yeah. aren't they usually bottomless? Or at least I they try are bottomless. To, they are yeah. bottomless. No, so they're that's that's why I share it. At, if they weren't uh, bottomless, I would. Draft house. I, do, <laughs> sorry, I, would I feel you. like I'm calling you out, and I do not mean to be calling you out. I, okay. I would chip it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is good. Whatever. Okay. So the and the third of those chief virtues associated with this Roman disciplina is sternness, and I think that's um, easy for us to um, dismiss and say it's bad. But like, there's a certain benefit to being focused, to being determined, to having ambition. And going after that ambition. I mean, the Romans aren't known for their comedies. This is good. This is good. <laughs> right. And so there are Roman heroes. They're jolly people. Yeah, they're yes, not. Exactly. But there are still heroes in the culture that we that are honored, but they are stern, but they yeah. are frugal, but they are, uh, I mean, faithful. And what, especially is, to their what is Cato uh, in Dante? What is he in charge of? Is he? I think he's the first person in purgatory. Like, he's the one that welcomes you to purgatory. Oh, really? Cato. Yeah. Yeah. So there is. Was he a Christian? No. Then he, if he's not a believer, he can't be in purgatory. Oh, no, that's not true. He's there. Because, yeah, there, I forget how many, but there and, are And uh, really? Tiberius yeah. is in... That sounds right, but I don't is remember. Tiberius? Oh, really? Isn't like the really good king who was like real nice and gave someone his cloak? He made it to purgatory? Huh. There, there are very few, though. Um, but he, but both. the point is that Cato made it. Yeah. Even though Cato is a man of... Of like yep. no humor. Yeah, I guess the... Well, I don't know if Dante was a particularly happy guy either. <laughs> either, yeah. Looking at... The uh, it was that thing he calls a comedy. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That was really that was really dumb. Okay. Uh, okay. So wh- why am I like harping on this discipline thing over and over again? Um, there is a line uh, I've talked before how I very much love self help and uh, like pop psychology and stuff like that. There is a line of thinking that uh, that says discipline in and of itself is a good thing. This is probably mm. m- most. Um, clearly articulated by Jocko Willink. If you've never heard uh, um, uh, discipline equals freedom is one of his mantras. And then also the name of one of his books. So there's a line of thinking that says like discipline in and of itself is a good thing. And if you were to just like read ancient Roman stuff, especially like military accounts, you would see that agreed with, you would see discipline as a thing praised in and of itself, a curbing of the things that you want. Again, a life that is centered around, uh, uh, again, being uh, stern or serious, being faithful and being frugal. Like you'll, you'll find those things being praised. Um, but I think they are like uh, insufficient, insufficient goods in and of themselves. Um, so this discipline needs to be uh, balanced out with excellence. There's a both a curb and a spur, and both are necessary to like a full and good life. So I guess that's like the first big point. Um, uh, the second, I guess, as we move into the second half, um, uh, this will be from Peter Brown's uh, Augustine of Hippo, a biography, which is really, really good. Um, we, I, I'm sure we've talked before how every summer there's a, a reading bingo list put out by the school. And this year, the four, oh, there are lots of things to talk about. So the school has four houses that all uh, students in the high school and all core teachers are placed into as a part of being at the school. Those house, Graham, what was the house that won? Yeah, I'm trying to remember Who which. Who won I think, last year? I think. I can't remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was. It was House Francis. Was it? Wait. And then the dean of House Francis. Yeah. Was he the is, one? Is, really he's an inspiring guy. guy. Yeah. He was like waving a flag. Yeah, yeah. Like a crazy person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Folly, but. Um, <laughs> a little bit of folly. Uh, dean good. Donaldson dean of Donaldson. the House Francis. Yeah, mm-hmm. good. Um, so. Yeah, we have four houses. Those four houses are Augustine, uh, Bonhoeffer, Francis, and Mueller. Wah, wah. Graham is the dean of the House of Francis. AJ is the dean of the House of Mueller. Indeed. Okay. So all that is prefaced to four. Some of the books on the bingo list this year are books related to those four house namesakes. So uh, the Eric Metaxas Bonhoeffer book is one of them. Uh, George Mueller's autobiography is on there. The C.S. Lewis book on Francis is on there. And then Peter Brown's Augustine of Hippo, which is the one I'll be quoting from in just a little bit, are all on there. So this has kind of been, anyway, part of my, a, a reading project of mine is to go through those four books. At some point, we will talk through those four people. Bonhoeffer is kind of on the edge in terms of classical people, but they're all really cool guys. Okay. So what is all this preface to? Um, in the this is to give some context to what Augustine is talking about when I read you this next quote. So this is a a chapter in the Peter Brown book is titled Disciplina. Graham currently has a close hand on his lips. No, it's good. Okay. Um, so 
the we talked about heresies a while ago. Um, Augustine's life is essentially defined by his account encounters with different heresies. He very early on in life was taken with the Manichaean way of life or the Manichaean way of thought. And so he himself was kind of a heretic starting off. So, wah, wah. Um, and then much of his life will be in relation to the Donatists. Um, Donatists were people that said that priests had to be perfect to like give sacraments. If they, they'd be perfect in this really specific way of having not given their Bibles over when their town was taken over. Anyway, it's a whole, whatever it's a heresy is the main point. So, um, uh, Augustine will, the donuts will be brought up is the only reason I say that. Okay. So first, the first thing being raised with discipline is whether it's a good thing in and of itself. And so I think the answer to that is no discipline is balanced by this spurring that some people need a spurring towards certain moral excellencies. Some people need a curbing The discipline must be paired with a, a virtus. A life of only discipline is like an externally successful life, but probably a miserable life. That's point number one. Uh, but then Augustine will go further and redefine this term of discipline and we'll launch off from there. Um, so some Donatists start getting persecuted and Augustine is like happy about it. So there's that Augustine had become convinced that men needed such firm handling. So needed to be needed some form of like suffering. He summed up his attitude in one word, disciplina. He thought of the, dis of this disciplina, not as many of his more traditional Roman contemporaries did as the static preservation of a Roman way of life. For him, it was an essentially active process of corrective punishment, a softening up, a, a softening up process a teaching by inconveniences. In the Old Testament, God had taught his wayward chosen people that just such a process of disciplina, checking and punishing their evil tendencies by a whole series of divinely ordained disasters. The persecution of the Donatists was another controlled, cat controlled catastrophe imposed by God, mediated on this occasion by the laws of Christian emperors. In Augustine's mind, it was no more than a special instance of the relationship of the human race as a whole to its stern father who would uh, whip the son he receives and indiscriminately enough at that like the man who beat his uh yeah oh, anyway okay so um what is happening to the donatists they are being punished for the purpose of softening them up and teaching them by inconveniences that is his conception of this discipline so even our english word discipline has these meanings in it um there's the discipline we impose on ourselves of focus on a goal, but there's also the discipline that we as teachers are required to do with students or uh, the, a parent has to do with uh, due to a child. Yeah. The, you've got to discipline them. Yeah. So we have both of those conceptions in the word discipline. Okay. So discipline is a, a bad thing that happens to us in order to teach us something. Okay. Um, so then I'm wondering how this does this say have anything to say to, um, again, in praise of folly? Does this, does this have anything to say to Erasmus? I just, I end the last mm. episode wondering, like, it sounds like we should live a life that's only the good stuff. Like, we're driven by our appetites, and those appetites pull us toward things that we want. And that sounds like a life of no problems. That sounds like a life just of getting things that I want. But then two podcasts ago, we talked about what a world where that was yeah, catered to. Perfect. And then what is that world? A good Guys, world? it's all coming together. Yeah, this, 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 I'm so this, excited. This is, this is I'm so excited for yeah, how it's all coming point. together. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay. So like inception. Thanks. It's like it was playing this way. They never are playing this way. <laughs> your impersonation was wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. Please make that dun, your ringtone. Dun, 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 still, no, you're still doing it. Yeah. That's, that's inception. No, no. Oh, I'm well aware. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, is a world without discipline good? And the answer in Brave New World is no. Do you agree with that? Heavens no. Uh, I do agree with that. Um, where everything is, where everything comes to you easy, where you get the reward without, where you get the reward without the effort. Um, there's just something in our in our nature that is dissatisfied with the reward. But I wonder. So, uh, but then there's also the experience of people who put in tremendous amount of discipline and get the reward, like the quarterback who wins the NFL and then says, "Like, what am I doing with my life?" Yes, and so do or you, gets depressed after winning because they're like, "I hit my peak," and but then do we? I'm envy, not happy. Do well. I was gonna say, do we envy that person? I don't envy that person. No, maybe you all. I and know. I think I think a world. This is gonna be a whew, stick with me. Okay, I think a world 
of only discipline ends in tyranny. Yes. And that's judging from roomfuls of children who are not governed, right? They, if they want something, they are going to go for it. And the one who wants the most is going to go for it until he rules everyone else. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to have a tyrant, right? That in, in, a, in a world of only discipline, only curbing and no virtue, that's yep. what you get. Yeah, this is great. So yeah, you're getting, this is one of the exact points of it that I don't think discipline in and of itself is a good thing. Only pursuing discipline is like not a good life. So well, I said of only discipline, I meant of only folly, only folly, right? Sure. Only folly ends in tyranny. Because if you only are pursuing folly, it's only like, I want the happy stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Or the st- if we're only driven by our passions is what yeah. I mean, then yeah. you're going to have cowards and then you're going to have a bunch of people who want a bunch of stuff and they all get together and you're going to have a tyrant. And then brave new world is just a tyranny without the tyrant. Like it, it's a tyranny of a different sort. It's a tyranny of, bi- of, of you, biological manipulation. You are still not allowed to live in a different way. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> Your world is still ruled by a tyranny. There's no freedom there. Yeah. But, uh, maybe this ties together brave new world and Erasmus. Like, I think the pull is always going to be toward folly. Like, like given the option between discipline and folly, I don't think we choose discipline naturally. I think some people do. Some people are more geared towards it. Like, I mean, not to be too personal. My wife, Amanda is more geared towards discipline than folly. Maybe this is, this is probably an individual difference. You're right. So there are some people who, yeah, really care about. And I'm geared more towards folly than discipline. <laughs> good. Yeah, this is a good. Uh, Which is why it works. Odd couple. Yeah, yep. good pair. Good pairing. You bring the little folly she needs, and yeah. she brings the spurring or the curbing you need. That's right. Like she said, she uh, you know she she bought low. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the sell. Is high. Selling. Yeah, I like hope there's no yeah, selling. <laughs> Diamonds in the rough. Is that your impersonation of Aladdin? Yes. Good. Well done. Or of Jafar. Isn't it Robin Williams? Arabian is it from the beginning? Robin Williams is the... Uh, yeah, that's the opening song, Arabian isn't it? Arabian days. What is, is happening right now? He's singing. Is this the second Disney song you've sung? Hello, shalom, good evening. I don't know about This is going to get us in trouble. <laughs> um, okay, so um, what's the point we're getting at? Okay, so um, just this is tying together our two previous episodes. This is to say that... Um, there is a role for both a curbing and a spurring on. And depending on who, who you are listening to this, you probably know which one of those two that you need, um, that you're going to, uh, tend toward one direction or the other. And there's like a type of loneliness on either side of those Mm. that you're either, um, you do nothing. And so like, uh, you stay home all day and there's like a loneliness there, or you make people mad because you're pushing too fast, too far too whatever. Like you're, you're getting all the things you want, but like no one's there with you. And there's a misery on both sides of that. Yeah, the fool, the true fool equally has no friends like the 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 Cato or the super yes. disciplined, you know, uh, try hard yep. or stick in the mud or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so then there's a lesson that both of those types need that goes something like this of either you, you need some sort of prodding if you're tended toward the the un, the non-doing side some more action, um, to do more, to increase an ambition, like to do something other than sit at home and, uh, eat Cheetos all day or whatever. Um, but there's also the other side of it that I think is really helpful with the discussion of folly, where what you need is like a recognition that life is good now. Like Mm. there's a certain type of driving personality that says, I need my company to be this, you know, X dollars in sales. I need, um, to finish this book, I need to finish these lesson plans, grade this homework, do whatever. And once I do that, I'll be happy. And the world will be a better place. The world will be a better place. And then you get there and it's not. Mm-hmm. That's what makes the despair of rich men. Yeah. Exactly. And I think this is why in many ways, um, Christianity only is the, uh, is the only framework for which there's joy because there's, there's a sense that like, um, the, that, the eschaton is taken care of by God. And if we're living in God's kingdom now, in many ways, uh, like heaven is out of our control and um, that joy can be had now. There, there, there's there's yep. no working towards it. Yep. Um, and, th- and I made reference to an, uh, uh, another thinker who had said, I can't remember his name, um, that um, there's a reason why Christians could understand understand paganism. So there's this there's this wrong conception that the pagans were all about mirth and frivolity and drinking wine and having fun. But the reason they were doing that was because 
because tomorrow we die and there's nothing after this. So there is or a if me- they didn't, the gods would murder them. Yeah. Right? Or there's there's a melancholiness to paganism, and then Christianity is not the the religion of like rules and dower and like you know uh, abstaining from all joy. Christianity was the religion of of the feast mm-hmm. of the medieval feast and the actual be- ability to enjoy. And to take the the joy that the pagans wanted and be able to have it because the boundaries of of you know God's kingdom had been set by God and we don't have to make them mm-hmm. and there's not there's there's not a great unknown or just death or blackness at the end of it that there is that there's life and health and peace with Him so um, you're right it's it's the tension of the two yeah. Chesterton talks about this too that that the church provides certain tensions that keep life where it should be, right? The true Christian, and this is convicting because I'm, I'm not this way, but a, a, the Christianity will end in a person who is diligent yet carefree, right? Carefree is probably the most apt way to talk about this. Yep. If you mm-hmm. trust all things to God, you literally have no cares. Mm-hmm. And your ambitions are ambitions because you simply enjoy them, not because you are discontent mm-hmm. with where you are. And... Yet you are diligent because that's what God asks you to be, yeah. right? There, there's a tension there that makes you a hardworking, totally carefree person. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not that, but... there's but, but some people will hear that and say, I'm diligent, but not carefree. And some people will say, I'm carefree, but not diligent. And so, yeah, uh, that's just... Right. God that asks that you work hard, but says, you don't have to work towards something. I've got the, it. Yeah, I've got so, it. Yeah, Hebrews says that... Hebrews compares the salvation to an eternal Sabbath. But James will say that a work without faith, uh, faith without works is dead. Like you, that tension is there, and so you need both sides of that. I mean, it's like the it's the great irony of 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 the virtues. Like take chastity for example. Um, if uh, you know, everyone said, well, if we just got rid of these patriarchal rules and we're able to sleep with everybody, then then we're finally gonna like unleash the the you know age of the, great, the great joy, <laughs> the age of sure, Aquarius. Yeah. Exactly, the, yeah. the great joy whenever the summer of love, right. and people are realizing now that no, this is like. Um, this this way of using other people's bodies for our own enjoyment is is incredibly um, increases melancholy doesn't doesn't liberate us from melancholy, but it's not but and so then the idea being like well if you if you set boundaries and rules to your life no you don't set them you adhere to the boundaries and rules of of what is proper mm-hmm. um, there's then there's actual joy there and there's mm-hmm. and then, and then and then the thing is is you know um, is enjoyed properly. Um, yeah, there's Christianity is the one that says freedom into slavery isn't freedom at all. Yeah, right. If we are if we are released to our own desires mm-hmm. and to those things that want mm-hmm. that that humans are typically enslaved to, what we end up is in slavery. Yeah, right. Perfect. Yeah. So well, then, rather than being in freedom, there's probably a way of thinking about discipline in regards to the framework of freedom to and freedom from. But I don't, I don't think I have the mental capacity to. That's almost Maybe. seven. <laughs> it's getting late. I, I think listeners know that we do three of these at a time. Almost so. seven a.m. <laughs> yeah, because we get we are disciplined to yeah, get up good, early. Early, early yes, yeah, we started really podcasting yeah. at five a.m. Yeah, that would never happen. And then we're going for a run after this. That sounds miserable. All right, boys, I do and I will build a tiny house. Good. <laughs> well, you kind of you love running. You would enjoy that. I well, these days my knee is mm. complaining, so I think I'm going to start biking instead. There you go. Um, so then. Graham, maybe this will complete the thought that you were making. But so again, so first point, like discipline in and of itself is not like an awesome thing. Uh, But discipline when used is like in uh, service to some end. Discipline is to get us somewhere. Um, I've many, many moons ago when we talked about uh, Joseph, Joseph Pieper, Joseph Pieper, Joseph Piper, whatever, uh, uh, leisure, the basis of culture. He talks about these two conceptions of the brokenness of man. One is to say that we are bent. So imagine that we're a piece of metal and we just get bent to the side. And another is to say that you take the piece of metal and you shatter it. You just destroy this this piece of metal. Um, in the first conception, the goal is to move from that bend closer to a straight piece of metal. Like that. that's what we're going after. And discipline is the process of moving that piece of metal But the goal of discipline is ease. The goal of discipline is not to stay in discipline forever. The phrase differently, my practice of um, courage should lead to me making more courageous decisions without me having to like think about it. Yeah, yeah. My practice of loving other people should lead to love being an easy choice for me. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get with the the token and type. Like you're doing the tokens to be the type. Yes. Yeah. Uh, So, okay, this uh, two different ways. I guess that I'll just 
what you just said is like Augustine's contribution to education, uh, that the, the purpose of education is not just to like give you lots of facts inside of your mind, but it's in fact to change, um, your affections is to change the things that you actually want. And so then the question is, how do you do that? And you just, that's the answer. You practice those things over and over again, that by practicing those things outside of you, that will change you internally. Um, I have a quote somewhere in here where he says exactly that, but that is what we're attempting to do in education. But that's not a thing that's only for other people. That's for us that we need to practice the virtues. We need to practice temperance, prudence, um, uh, courage, and justice so that we become courageous, just, temperate, prudent people. So that's the, that's why we're, so again, we're starting with this like Roman conception of discipline where it's curbing something, Augustine will take that and say, discipline is actually like God using something to, it's like a punishment, but with a purpose. And the purpose of it is to shape us, is to change us into people where we don't receive that punishment because we make better choices. Mm -hmm. That's Augustine. Cool. Okay. So the only last point to make with that is that um, we were kind of getting at this, is that the virtues, when we talk about the virtues, prudence, temperance, fortitude, justice, those aren't like dour um things that you just read about and just like, you know, affirm and by nodding, but they are, uh, exciting. They are, um, like they are better ways of living by following those than by living a different way. It, you accomplish, I don't know the right way to say it. It's like, not that you accomplish more, but like life is better for falling under the four virtues. Life is happier, more pleasant, more cheerful, more whatever, falling, falling under those four virtues than it is not falling under those virtues. The pursuit of virtue isn't just, I, I want to deny myself all the things that I want. It's you will want better things by following these virtues. So that's the only other point to add with discipline, that the end of it is not like misery at not getting what I want. It's getting better things than you wanted in the first place. Mm. Mm, cool. Okay, that's all I got. Uh, yeah. Well, this has been, cla- uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Thomas. That was okay, good. Great, good. It's a good way to think about it. Thanks. If you sat through that, if you've been sitting through all you these must podcasts, be very you were yeah. disciplined. Yeah. And you must, you must be thinking to yourself, man, I just wanted to like learn about Homer, and now you have got even more than you knew you wanted. <laughs> you got better things. Better you things. Got more <laughs> things. I don't know if you got better. <laughs> is it uh, really hot in this room? Is that just me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. little toasty. Okay. We, we, we live in. Texas. That is true. We do live in Texas. All right. Well, thanks for listening. This has been Classical Stuff You Should Know. You can check us out online at classicalstuff.net. You can email us at classicalstuff at veritasacademy.net. You can tweet at us. Our handle is at C-L-S-S-C-A-L stuff. And you can, you know, shoot us emails. We'll try to respond. Uh, we love getting emails from you guys and reading those. And you guys have made us a actually kind of successful. Well, I mean, successful as far as we're concerned. We are we are expecting like our mom to yeah. listen. <laughs> yeah. And by our, I mean like mine. Mm-hmm. Like I was just expecting my mom and nobody else. And I think she's listening. Hi, mom. <laughs> and everybody else, thank you so much for listening. We love seeing reviews and love knowing that you guys are out there and making making our work worthwhile. So talk to us. We like to, we like to hear from you. You make everything more fun. Cool. And so we will see you next week. And I hope you enjoyed the last few episodes. So bye. See you later. Bye.